Happy April Fool's Day, a.k.a. Uh, the day 70% of the population says uh, an unfunny lie, and then they're like, I'm kidding. I'm a little bit of a jokester myself. No, you're not, Greg. And honestly, I wouldn't be your friend if our wives weren't friends. Also, no one says chillax anymore, nor should anyone have ever. Anyway, welcome back to The Philip DeFranco Show. It is Thursday, April 1st, 2021. Subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and let's just jump into it. And actually, for the first story today, while we're on the note of bad jokes and pranks, we need to talk about the TikTokers slash YouTube YouTubers Alan and Alex Stokes, known as the Stoke Twins, because they are back in the news. And this, because it appears that they have finally been handed consequences for a fake robbery prank that they filmed back in 2019. And if you're like, why are you saying consequences? They'd actually been facing a maximum of five years in jail if convicted for a video that they put out, but uh, the, the punishment was far less, but we'll get to that in a second. As far as the video in question, if you don't remember, uh, the brothers filmed this prank video over the course of three days. It involved them running around the Irvine, California area, acting as if they had just robbed a bank. You see them dressed in all black, wearing ski masks, lugging around, duffel bags, spilling cash everywhere. At one point, as you might remember, they call an Uber as a getaway car, but the driver becomes uncomfortable. He kicks them out. That incident reportedly prompts a bystander to call 911, thinking they're actually seeing bank robbers attempting a carjacking. Things then continue to escalate from there. Actually, it results in the police ordering the Uber driver out of his car at gunpoint. The police go on to give the boys a stern warning, but then still just four hours later, the twins continue to film their prank at a nearby university. That said, uh, the reason we're talking about it today is the twins have actually pleaded guilty to false imprisonment and two counts of falsely reporting an emergency. And as it turns out, in exchange for that guilty plea, an Orange County judge reduced their original felony false imprisonment charges to a misdemeanor. So instead of getting any jail time, remember there was a maximum of five years that they were facing, they were instead sentenced to 160 hours of community service, ordered to serve one year of formal probation, and required to pay an unspecified amount of restitution. But the brothers also reportedly agreeing to stay away from UC Irvine, where part of the prank was carried out, and they agreed to, quote, stop making videos that mimic criminal behavior. So you know, Consequences, though, uh, not the same consequences if they were Joe Blow, uh, but the consequences because they are young, dumb, famous, and rich. Although, I, I do want to point out, because they look very young, they're not 16, they're 24 years old. They're, they're old enough to know better. Then, let's talk about how the battle and backlash over Lil Nas X's Satan shoes is actually still continuing, with Nike just getting a big win in court. You know, we talked about this, among other things, on Monday, with Lil Nas X partnering with Mischief to make these Satan shoes that each apparently have a drop of human blood, with the limited run selling out in under a minute. And the shoes there were modified Nike Air Max 97s, even having the swoosh logo, but, of course, Nike denied having anything to do with the collaboration. Then, Nike, of course, filed a lawsuit citing trademark infringement, and as of yesterday, a U.S. district judge approved their request for a temporary restraining order against Mischief, meaning that as of right now, Mischief cannot legally fulfill any orders of the shoes. Though, that may prove to just be a temporary win, and maybe even just a win in name only, with Mischief claiming that all pairs of the shoes, except for one that have been saved for a giveaway, have been shipped. With them also trying to argue that because there will be no further distribution of the shoes, Nike won't suffer harm requiring a restraining order. With them also arguing that these shoes provide artistic social commentary. But uh, regarding what will happen in terms of long-term and permanent decisions with this shoe, I mean, we're gonna have to wait and see. Though, I will say, given how fast they got these shoes out, it feels like this may have also been part of Mischief's plan. And uh, I mean, really, unless there's some kind of massive, unexpected monetary penalty, this is gonna, this whole situation has kind of worked in their favor. We've gotten so much free counterculture press from all this. Then, because we haven't done it in a while and I'm not gonna see you for a few days, so let's load you with as much information as possible. Let's do some quickie news. We got the news that Walgreens alone has vaccinated over 8 million Americans. Though, before you blow them and the other retailers where you can get vaccinations kisses, you should know this situation has been incredibly profitable for them. According to reports, retailers are expected to administer half of the vaccination shots, with the shots being pretty much all profit because they do not have to pay for the vaccines, neither does the customer. The government is footing the bill, with the government actually announcing this month that they'll be raising the vaccine payment rate. And you pair that information with things like last month, CVS forecast 400 to $500 million in profit from COVID tests and vaccines in 2021, and a ton of states are about to open up vaccinations to everybody. You also had Microsoft in the news because they won a U.S. Army contract for augmented reality headsets, and according to reports, this is going to be worth up to $21.9 billion over 10 years. And this story is kind of amazing to me because I think years ago, I went to, it might've been E3 and I got to test out the HoloLens and I, they did this like Minecraft or the, the, I forget what it was. It was, it was this thing in front of me and I was kind of left going, eh. 
what? Is this really the future? Right, remember when they were promoting it, they were like, look, look at how Minecraft could look. And now we're seeing tens of billions of dollars being spent to militarize it. And as for the usages here, according to the reporting, they referenced a prototype that a CNBC reporter tried out in 2019, where they displayed a map and a compass. They also had thermal imaging revealing people in the dark. The system could also show the aim for a weapon. But yeah, I, I guess Microsoft has you covered from Minecraft to warfare. Then we're seeing more and more big established brands jumping into the world of NFTs, which not the most shocking thing. There's just so much money being thrown around right now. Right? I mean, just looking at NBA Top Shot, you have hundreds of millions of dollars being thrown around for what essentially are video highlights that have been minted. You've got Dapper Labs, the creator of NBA Top Shot, reportedly getting $305 million in funding with uh, reportedly some of the funding coming from people like Michael Jordan, Kevin Durant, Kyle Lowry. And so with that happening, we're seeing things like an announcement this morning where Funko, right? The, the collectible figure maker. They announced that starting in June, they'll begin launching $9.99 NFT offerings with new ones being introduced weekly. And also this appeared to send their stock soaring. I mean, since the announcement and as of filming, we've seen Funko's price jump from around $19.50 a share to a high of $25. With Funko CEO also noting, our ability to combine Funko Pop digital NFTs with exclusive Funko Pop vinyl figures has the potential to be a game changer. By backing the rarest of the Funko NFTs with exclusive redeemable Funko Pops, we are poised to enter the NFT market in a very unique manner. Right, and I think if NFTs are gonna go more and more mainstream, I think this kind of uh, NFT real physical product, uh, we're gonna see more and more of that. Right, like uh, Atari, for example, another massive company has jumped into the NFT space. Right, one of the most exclusive NFTs they're gonna be offering is a 3D model of a centipede arcade cabinet bearing the digital signature of co-creator Donna Bailey. But reportedly bundled with that, they'll also be including what they call a beautifully restored and working original centipede coin op physical cabinet. But at the same time, there's also some concern with the NFT market because you're seeing reports like this one from Axios. The daily sales volumes has dropped to about $3 million down from a peak of $19 million. So there is the question of, are we seeing the space in general cool off or is this kind of just a natural ebb and flow that we're going to see with something that's so young? But from that, let's take a second to pay some bills and thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Athletic Greens. You know, Athletic Greens is designed to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet with just one scoop. It boosts energy, supports gut health, your immune system and stress. Also, its 75 ingredients include a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, superfood, greens blend, and more, so you don't need most other individual supplements piling up on your countertop. And Athletic Greens is fantastic for people across the board, whether you're a working professional, an athlete, a busy parent like myself and my wife. It also comes in powder form, and it's more bioavailable than pill-based supplements, so your body can absorb the nutrients. It mixes well with water, and honestly, one of the most important things, it is the best tasting greens I've ever tried. All while having less than one gram of sugar per serving. And the best part is that they're giving you added immune system support with a free one year supply of vitamin D plus five individual travel packs with your purchase. So main point here, head on over to athleticgreens.com slash Franco, or just click that link in the description down below to get their best offer of all time. An offer only available in the US, Canada, UK, and Europe as of right now. So do not miss out. Then let's talk about good and not so good COVID news. The good news, we're seeing really good reports and data regarding the effectiveness of the already released vaccines. This including new details released today from the ongoing phase three clinical trial of the Pfizer vaccine. With those findings saying that the two dose vaccine remains more than 91.3% effective in preventing symptomatic cases for at least six months. And arguably even more important, it is working even better at preventing severe cases over those six months, showing 95 to 100% effectiveness depending on the definition of severe disease being used. And this also coming a day after the company revealed that their vaccine is 100% effective when administered to kids between the ages of 12 to 15, with reports saying that they'll soon be submitting that data to the FDA in hopes of getting emergency authorization to open up vaccine eligibility to those groups in the near future. So that was the good COVID news and then the not so good is reportedly up to 15 million Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccines were ruined after factory workers at a plant in Baltimore accidentally mixed up ingredients several weeks ago. The plant in question here is reportedly run by Emergent Biosolutions, a manufacturing partner of both Johnson & Johnson as well as AstraZeneca. Both of the vaccines, like many other inoculations, use what is known as a vector, which is basically a safe version of the virus that stimulates the immune system to make antibodies. But key thing here is that while both J&J &J and AstraZeneca use this technology, their vectors are different and cannot be used interchangeably. And so, uh, according to the New York Times, the mix-up ended up happening in late February when one or more factory workers accidentally confused the two vaccines, with a mistake not being discovered until later during routine quality control checks. Now, very notably here, because if you just 
read the headline, you, you, all of a sudden there's gonna be more vaccine hesitancy, people worried, oh, it is, is actually gonna be effective. This issue does not affect any of the J&J shots that have already been sent out. None of the doses in the contaminated batch ever left the plant, but it's still a very big deal because I mean, one, in addition to the now 15 million doses that were reportedly ruined, also two other doses of the vaccine were supposed to come out from that plant. And now the incident has prompted federal regulators to delay the authorization of the plant's production lines, thus delaying future shipments. But while negative news, you do not need to panic. According to the Times, federal officials still expect the US to have enough doses to meet President Biden's promise to have enough supply to vaccinate all US adults by the end of May. And actually, despite the delay, both Pfizer and Moderna are ahead of schedule, with Moderna actually set to close being approved to deliver vials of the vaccine to have 15 doses instead of 10. Then, and do not confuse this with any April Fool's joke, starting today, new healthcare benefits will be available to tens of millions of Americans, including many who had been previously uninsured. And this, because the $1.9 trillion stimulus package that was passed in early March includes billions of dollars in new healthcare subsidies under the Affordable Care Act, right? And so according to reports, nearly everyone with an ACA health plan can qualify for more financial help. Also, about 3.3 million Americans who buy their insurance outside the marketplace, as well as millions more who are currently uninsured. And in fact, according to a new government analysis, more than 6 million Americans will be able to find plans that won't cost them anything in premiums, which will be fully paid for by the government, right? Which is huge because that's about three out of five uninsured eligible Americans. But also, regardless of that, the savings will still be quite significant for many people. As the New York Times notes, a 64 year old who earns $30,000, for example, would see monthly premiums drop to $85 from 195 for a mid-level plan. And noting a family of four that earns $40,000 would go from paying a $136 premium to nothing at all, right? And so I share all of this, not just to be like, yay, isn't that cool? But because if you or someone you know is uh, one, currently enrolled in Obamacare, uh, two, does not have have any health insurance or three just wants to see if you qualify for the subsidies please go to healthcare.gov and create an account or log in. The sooner, the better. Though, uh, while the enrollment opportunity usually only happens for a short period in the fall, this year, people actually have until August 15th to enroll or switch plans. And very big note here, if you are one of the existing 8.2 million enrollees, these benefits will not be automatically applied. You have to log into your account and re-enroll. Though, according to the Times, if you do not re-enroll, you will still get the subsidy, it just will be rolled into your 2021 tax return. Right, but then you're talking next year rather than monthly savings this year. And then finally, in this section, let's talk Talk about Georgia and specifically it, it's kind of the the business and corporate world's take uh, on the voting restrictions that we're seeing passed now in Georgia. We're seeing things this week like on Tuesday a group of more than 70 black executives urged corporations across the country to take action against the GOP-led efforts to restrict voting access. Right and with Georgia specifically we're talking about the kind of just in your face ridiculous restrictions. And in the past we, we kind of broke down the the full list but uh, things like seriously limiting drop box locations for some counties as well as drop boxes being shut down on the last four days of voting. It even now being a misdemeanor to directly hand out food or drinks to voters who are waiting in lines at polling sites. It's also concerning because Georgia isn't alone here. At least 42 other states have been working to restrict voting access. But the big news is we are seeing corporations speak out, though uh, differing degrees here. Right, previously you had some Georgia-based companies like Delta, Coca-Cola, and Home Depot offering kind of general statements in support of voting rights, though not taking a specific stance on the bills. So we have seen updates like Kenneth Schnault, uh, the former CEO of American Express speaking out. You also had Delta yesterday after facing calls for a boycott for not taking a stronger stance on the Georgia voting bill, releasing a statement from its CEO saying since the bill's inception, Delta joined other major Atlanta corporations to work closely with elected officials from both parties to try and remove some of the most egregious measures from the bill and adding we had some success in eliminating the most suppressive tactics that some had proposed. However, I need to make it crystal clear that the final bill is unacceptable and does not match Delta's values. And since then, we've also seen the CEOs of Coca-Cola and Apple speaking out against the bill. We also had the executive director of Major League Baseball saying that he's considering whether or not to move the league's all-star game out of the state, something that President Biden yesterday said that he would strongly support. You also had the likes of Viacom CBS speaking out and saying they stand against this law today. Though we also saw the likes of Tyler Perry, who actually has a studio in Atlanta, Georgia, standing against the law, but also saying, as some consider boycotting, please remember that we did turn Georgia blue and there is a gubernatorial race on the horizon. That's the beauty of a democracy. But also with this story, and, and unsurprisingly, because we've seen something similar happen in the past, there has been political pushback against Delta now. For example, you had Georgia Governor Brian Kemp saying, yesterday. Specifically for Delta, they did not express any reservations about the final products of this bill. It wasn't until a couple of days after we signed it that after the political pressure that Ed Bastian is now putting out a statement that quite honestly, nothing he said yet is pointing to suspic uh, any specific points in the bill that are causing suppression or 
any of those things because it doesn't exist. Right, and notably that point of I haven't seen any specific claims is something that Kemp hammered on repeatedly, even though CNBC's anchors directly cited specific complaints from that coalition of black executives. We're also seeing reports now, and it feels like it's history repeating itself, uh, the Georgia House threatens Delta's tax break. But for now, that is where we are with this story, and it will be interesting to see uh, what, if anything, this does. And ultimately, with this story, and honestly, anything else that stood out today, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below, because this is the end of the show. Thank you as always for being a part of my daily dives into the news. Subscribe and hitting the like button, all the good stuff. Also, if you're looking for more to watch, I get covered with some more news or maybe some behind the scenes right here. You can click or tap right there or top description down below. But with that said, of course, as always, my name is Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you next time.